talking about DL&W unit number 426, one of the first end cab switchers built by Electromotive Corporation, EMC, in 1935. Uh, it is uh, a unit that worked here at Scranton. Uh, there are many photographs of it working here in the period of time from 1935 to 1947 when the Lackawanna sold it to Bethlehem Steel Company for use at their mining operations in the Ebensburg area, western Pennsylvania. And it later came under the control of the, um, the Cambria and I'm trying to remember, the C&I Railroad, which was a Bethlehem subsidiary. Um, the, the local Delaware Lackawanna uh, short line bought the unit and restored it to uh, as much as possible the condition it was in as a Lackawanna unit of 1935. It's, it's a real uh, relic from the dawn of dieseldom. It worked here with steam engines its whole career. Steam lasted in Scranton for another six years after that unit left. So it didn't, it didn't put the fires out here, but it was uh, the first end cab switcher uh, design that was successful. And it's going to operate on this Saturday and Sunday with running caboose trips. Uh, it would be a very nice thing to see operate. The last time I remember it operating was in 2001.
exactly the same design as the original headlight on the on the locomotive. The same for the, the rear facing headlight. The visors the same, everything. It's, it was great. It's a that headlight was uh, the way it looked originally. Look, it's not the original headlight. The DL shop here in Scranton, when the unit arrived in the late 90s, uh, tried to bring it back to its original 1935 appearance, and the headlight was a huge problem. However, uh, CMO of the Delaware Lackawanna, Donnie Colangelo, found that a headlight was readily obtainable off a DL and W MU car, and he installed uh, those headlights on the front and rear ends of engine 426 and uh, you know if you look at a picture of her in the diesel spotters guide uh, you'll find that she looks just like she did in 1935. these two engines were together was a Conneaut in 1958. Okay. So that's ours. Wow. And she's not operable, but you know. But she was a famous excursion engine in the late 60s and into the early 70s. Part of the Steamtown collection. These engines were built one month apart in 1944. And uh, they did not have brass. It was being used in the war effort, so the bells are made of iron. Now, that's why they painted the bells yellow, and if you look at any color pictures of the engines built during the war, you'll see they had the yellow bell. It's kind of disappointing when you look at it, because it's a beautiful face with like a, like somebody has a terrible hat on after, after getting all gussied up, you know? But, but they're two beautiful machines. Here's seven. train from Allentown to Pittston unassisted uh, on the uh, 22nd and 23rd of August. Uh, yeah, I saw a video of that. She is the finest operating steam locomotive in the United States. That is true. And, and uh, in my opinion, growing up when they were still in service, the finest type of steam locomotive of any kind. They're definitely the most versatile. Absolutely. I'm not going to 